The purpose of a track start in swimming is to begin a race quickly and efficiently by gaining the maximum distance from the bulkhead into the water. The positioning of limbs and body with respect to the block and to the surface of the water determines how much force the swimmer can create off the blocks and how well the swimmer can transition into the stroke. Ultimately, the goal is to complete the action as fast and as efficiently as possible. In order to analyze the movements of my track start, I have split the dive into four basic phases. The preparation, acceleration, flight, and entrance phases. The preparation phase begins when the starter blows his whistle and commands, take your mark. Prior to starting on the block, I adjust the wedge to accurately accompany my height. I get on the block with my preferred foot, the right foot, forward with toes curled around the edge. My left foot is placed flat on the wedge. When the wedge is in the proper position, my preferred foot is placed where when my hip, in order to make the front leg go forward, flexes, then knee flexes, and my leg creates an angle of 140 degrees. My left foot is placed where my hip extends in order to make my leg go back, then the knee flexes and creates an angle of 80 degrees. Optimally, this angle should be closer to 90 in order to achieve the maximum force of push off the block. In order to bring the torso and arms down to the block, hip flexion is performed. Once my legs are in place, shoulder flexion occurs at 120 degrees until my fingers are gripping the block shoulder width apart. In this position, my back is flat and my head is in a neutral position, aligned with my spine, with my hips as high in the air as possible. As the whistle blows and I transition into the acceleration phase, we can see that my back foot plantar flexes in order to achieve the maximum push off the wedge as possible. We also see that as the weight shifts from being on my back leg in the preparation phase onto my front leg during the acceleration phase, the angle of my back leg increased from 80 degrees to 140 degrees, and the angle of my front leg decreased from 140 degrees to 89 degrees to get the maximum force of push off of the front of the block. The arms are also simultaneously flexing further to reach into a streamlined position. As the acceleration phase continues, my front foot plantar flexes to gain the last bit of force possible and my back has fully extended to align with my spine and my head. As I enter into the flight stage, this is where my improvements could be seen, because we know the most efficient way to enter the water from a dive is in a straight line. As you can see, my right leg is extending, but not far enough back that it aligns with my left leg and spine. Because my legs aren't even, this will cause my dive to rotate a little bit upon entry, rather than going in straight. In addition, while my shoulder flexion increased, it did not flex enough to align with my spine, decreasing the distance that I would travel if they were fully flexed at 180 degrees. As I finish in the entrance phase, my arms, head, and spine are all aligned and fully flexed to maximize the efficiency of my entrance. My hips make an angle of 162 degrees with my body, meaning there is a slight flexion motion, but very close to the optimum 180 degrees at entry point. Additionally, we can see that my ankles are plantar flexed to complete the streamline motion and enter the water as seamlessly as possible from head to toe. After the dive, I am able to begin the underwater phase and start swimming with a great lead on my imaginary competitor.